What's up guys, Evergreen Fly Guy. I am uh, about to do another fly for you guys because I don't have much content at the moment. I haven't been able to get out, my, my schedule has been super, super busy. So I've just been tying flies. Um, I'd like to do some work on the kayak, but I, like I said, just didn't have, haven't had the time, I haven't had the materials to do what I want to do on it yet. But I'd like to get something coming up for you guys. Um, hopefully I'm gonna get out and do some fishing this weekend. I'd love to use this fly that you're actually gonna see me tie. I'd love to try that out. But uh, let's get right into that. Okay guys, so I have one of these jig heads in here. So this is like, um, I bought a huge lot back if you guys saw previous video and I had a bunch of these old jig heads. If you saw my previous video, I've done some what I call bass bugs, uh, which are like a jig head marabou mixture thing. I have one right here. This is kind of like, I slicked it back so you could kind of imagine what it looks like in the water. So yeah, just a jig head on there. This is the one I tied up previously. This is a olive with some red uh, flash in it and a peacock herald collar up here. Now, uh, I got, I mean, I'm sure there's tons of different ways you could do these. I kind of got the inspiration from the Ned Rig in traditional bass fishing. Just kind of something that's going to, you can bounce along the water or you can swim it. Or you can do like, you just different retrieves for it. And it's just going to have a nice little play, a nice little flash in the water. I might actually cut down on the flash. I did four strands. I might just do one single strand. Might be a little overkill. But yeah, I just wanted something to like play with in the water. Kind of a finesse type thing, but also you could you could do it for bigger presentations. Like instead of the peacock hair around the collar, you could do like a really fluffy uh, dubbing collar. Or you could do a uh, feather collar of some sort. For the one we're going to do now, I'm going to do a gray. And I'm using this um, hairline dubbing, the X-Select. And this is gray minnow. And that's exactly what I want to build right here. I want to build a really nice minnow presentation. So that's what I'm aiming to do. So I'm just going to go start by putting down a thread kind of bed. You don't have to coat the thing completely. Like the hooks are kind of small. So if you wind up getting it completely, you know, it's fine. It's probably for the better. If you don't, it's whatever too. And I'm just going down here to the bend of the hook. I'll put that there. Pop my cradle up and prop it up. Trim that off. Okay, and it's actually really simple. Super, super simple fly, it's like three steps. Uh, next step is I'm gonna go ahead and grab a strand of marabou out of here. Uh, you want one that's pretty fluffy, like this one probably a little bit a little bit too thin. Like that'd be a good piece for doing something bigger, but um, I pretty much just want to make one quill out of this whole thing right here. So I gotta judge which piece I want to find the best piece. Something that's gonna go around there good and coat it just how I want it. And I think this piece ought to do. I did have to trim some of the stem on it. So one thing I'm not a huge fan of on this XLX stuff is it comes with a really thick st stem on the end. And oftentimes if you're wanting to use it for something smaller, you're having to trim the stem a little bit. I'm sure if you were tying like a musky fly or something like that, like something big, the, the thicker stem would not be an issue. But if you're tying like smaller stuff like this, it's, you know, it's a little bit tedious. And I'm just tying this onto the back here, and I'm putting like a lot of wraps around it, if you can't tell. Again, it's mainly to hold that stem down. Back tied up, I guess, as bad as it's probably going to get. Um, hopefully that'll still not work for us. Yep. Don't really know why this is becoming such a heavy issue on this one. Usually it's not that big of an issue. I guess it's just how thick the stems are. But either way, it looks like it's going to work for us a little bit. So as I'm doing this, I like to pull the marabou back. It's also why I'm not rotating it with the rotary part. Because I like to keep this trim back as best as possible. And I do like to do kind of tight turns in this. Just so it stacks up evenly. But I, like I said, I also just want to use one single strand of this marabou. I don't want to use multiple. So if you feel like you need to, uh, you need to adjust it. You need to 
push it out or push it up farther, do so. Or you could use multiple pieces. It's really however you want to do it. It's not going to hurt it if you use multiple pieces. It probably will make it a thicker uh, presentation, but it's not like that's necessarily a bad thing, depending on what you want it for. that back just keep wrapping and don't worry if you get it up here to the top of the head it doesn't really matter just kind of keep folding it in until you you're done with it so I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it once we get it up here and we tie it off getting a little too tight up there so I, I like to try to pull up pull out fibers if you get it too tight you can kind of reverse it and pull them out a little bit like that I know it kind of looks junky right now but it cleans up nice okay I think that's the best spot to tie it off here Now what I'm doing is I'm I'm reeling back, I'm cranking back onto the to the fibers to make sure they're locked down in place really well. So we don't lose any. And we don't have to do that over again because it's a pain in the butt if you want to do it again. <laughs> and I've created kind of like a little thread base right up there right behind the jig head here. Now at this point, this is when I like to come in and I like to push my fibers back and make sure they're all situated like they need to be or like how I'd want them to be. Might have to pull some forward, might have to pull some back and then pull them back. It's, di it's different all around for each one. And you know, it still kind of looks crazy but you see our our shape coming in. I like to get it off the hook. I do my best to keep it away from the, the hook shank here because I don't want anything to mess with a hook set. That includes fibers tangled around it. Now, I like to just wet my fingers a little bit, come back and coat this out of my way. You can use a, uh, you can use like grease or saliva <laughs> that's what that's what I'm using that's what most people would use I'd assume now um, at this point I could do the red flash again I do have pearl flash which I love using I use pearl flash on everything I'm not really sure exactly what would be the best for this if it would be better with a red or would be red or better with the clear um, I'm gonna go with the pearl honestly if I had a black flash I would probably go with that before I went with anything Simply because I feel like a black fat flash might give it a more of a, um, like a cr crappy type look to it. But the clear crystal's fine too. It's just a basically a little attractor. This is going to be great in like clear type water. At least I think it will. And this is another lure that's just, it's good for a variety of different fish. You could pan fish with this. You could uh, bass, obviously. That's kind of... I got, like I said, I got the idea from a uh, from a Ned Rig. Um, I mean, I'm like I said, like, you know, I'm sure there's other versions of this. I'm not saying I have a market on this. This is just my take on it. It's essentially like an old school crappy jig where you see the like, or panfish jig where they're like, you got the chenille wrapped around and you got the fuzz tail. It's essentially something like that, but it's a marabou body with some flash and another, your collar, um, which will probably do peacock again, just because I like the way the peacock just stands out on there. Um, but like I said, you could do a dubbing one. Like, a, let's see. Um... Yeah, there's a bunch of different dubbings that you could really use for this. Um, I have this variety pack from the Superfine. And uh, the Blue Dunn probably wouldn't look too bad as a collar. Um, you could do a bunch of different feather options for a collar. It's really just a whatever you prefer thing. But uh, 
We're going to continue on with the Peacock Hero. I got a big pack of Peacock Hero, and I'm going to try to get out the longest strand I can find, because this is like a surplus thing. Like, again, this came out of that order, the big order thing that I found. And uh, not all the Peacock Heralds are, like, extremely long. A lot of them are short for use for smaller stuff. It works great for that, but we might be winding up putting, like, two on here just to try to make this collar more uh, visible I guess would be as best I could say just wanna I want it to be able to I want to be able to see it really well I want it to be a like a part of this like a not just like a subtle little thing fibers in my way so because of that I'm gonna wrap onto itself quite a bit just stack it up bulky this one actually might be enough I don't know we'll see when I'm done wrapping it for what I want oh, that's getting there yeah it might be we might have enough here yeah actually you know what with this final twist I think that's just good enough. I'm just pinching it behind there so I could make sure that peacock was locked in there tight. I'm just taking a few more wraps. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this little excess. There we go. I'm gonna move my cradle out of the way, grab my whip finish tool. Four's probably plenty. We we'll finish that guy off. Cut the slack. And uh, at this point, I'd probably want to add some cement or cure. Um, I'm not going to do that for the sake of the video. But let me just show you guys what we're working with here. So this is a completed one. Pre, pre being wet. So you know you kind of got a big skirt to it, but once you get it wet, it's gonna come. It's gonna be in the water, looking some somewhat like this. You just bounce around the bottom. Let me uh, let me see if I could shape this guy for you guys a little bit so you can see it, how it would look. There we go. So, yeah, just like that, like a little little fish presentation with our jig head up here. The black, I think, kind of functions like a, that black peacock girl, to me, kind of functions like an eye. Just cross the bottom, just like that. And uh, I'd like to try to get out and use both these guys this, uh, this coming weekend. Um, I think you guys have seen me use the bass bug before. Like I said, the bass bug is very similar to this one. It's lighter olive, and it uses a pearl flash, and these gold jig heads right here. And uh, I believe the jig head size is a 7 16th. I'm going to look on my previous video because I don't have the pack anymore. And these gray jig heads are essentially the same size. They're about a one size bigger, possibly. So if you want this exact size, um, just go about one size bigger than the what's listed in the video honestly I don't there's not much of a difference like the hook shank is a little bit longer and the heads a little bit longer either way it's gonna get the job done okay guys that was it um, these are just like little jig head guys I don't really I'll come up with a name for it before the video is posted I honestly don't know what to call it I called the last one bass bugs but they're basically just little jig head marabou uh, bait fish imitations, whatever you want to call it, bug imitations, it could do a lot. I, like I said, kind of inspired me from a Ned Rig to, to do it like this, and I, I like them. I can't wait to use them. I think they're great little little flies, or you could even use them traditionally on a lightweight setup. Just great little jig head type things. But uh, Thanks for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, check out the rest of my stuff, bunch of content coming this weekend. Check me out on Instagram. Appreciate all the support.